was plunged into a maelstrom of conflict, an era when ideologies clashed and nations stood at the precipice of darkness. War, an unwelcome guest in the house of humanity, has occasionally been deemed necessary to hold tyranny, safeguard freedom, or safeguard against imminent chance. Amidst the fervor of conflict, dialogue is often attempted, diplomacy pursued, but when all avenues for peace falter, the choice to fight becomes a last resort. Yet, the path of conflict is paved with sacrifice, lives lost, families shattered, and scars etched upon the collective consciousness. War exacts a toll beyond measures, leaving wounds that time alone cannot heal. It seems things are getting serious, sir. Yeah, they've been talking about enlisting more men. Do you think I should be enlisting? Oh dear, let's not rush into anything. There are many ways to serve without going to war. Your mother's right, son. Besides, there are other ways to contribute uh, to your country. And you're still young. Okay, Dad. But I really want to do something new. I heard the rationing more things now. I'll have to be more careful with what I buy for meals. You're right, eh? The blackout measures are also getting stricter too. You need to properly set up the blackout curtains. Eh? I'll have to that, Dad. You can't risk any light coming through. Let's spend some time together this weekend. Maybe go fishing. Get our minds off this terrible war happening right now. Free that. I'll pack our gears. It'll be nice to have a moment of peace. We'll get through this together. I'll make sure that we'll get through what through this war. We'll do everything we can to keep you safe. Hey everyone, I brought some snacks. Dad, I can't shake these images from the news. The bombings, the devastation. It's hunting. It's very scary. Oh darling, it's dreadful. But joining the army isn't the only way to respond. Your mother's right, son. War scars through generations. And joining the military isn't the right answer right now. You have to think this through. But I can't just stand by. I need to do something to stop this madness. Friends of mine, they've been thinking of signing. I feel the same urgency. But your life, your safety is so much of a risk. Son, your heart's in the right place, but you have to think this through for a bit again. War scars through generations. How would we feel if we lose you? But I want to make a difference. I want to protect those who can defend themselves, Mom. Dad. What do I do? We'll support you in whatever you decide. Just promise to come back home safe. Okay, I promise. I can't ignore this feeling inside.
Mom, Dad, I've made my decision. I need to do this. We understand, dear. But please be cautious. Take care of yourself. Your mother's right, son. Remember your training. Watch out for yourself and your comrades. Yes, Dad, I will. It's hard to see you go, especially like this. I'll miss you both. I really have to go. You're doing what's right, son. You're defending our country. But promise me, you'll come back home to us safe. Thank you, Dad. I promise you I'll make you proud. Mom, Dad, I love you. I promise to go back. Suspended in the air, I hear myself breathing. Hanging by a thread, my heart is barely beating. I haven't fallen yet, but I feel it coming. to ask if you break it to me gently that I'm waking the next day without you beside me and who I hold on to today tomorrow will just be a memory and that I will look back at all of this and wonder why I've stayed in here just to Thank you for helping and making room for my wife. <laughs> what a nasty world. You know, my wife should be pitied, for she is sending her son, 22 years of age, onto this treacherous war. We even sold our home at Solmona just to go meet him at Rome. You should thank God that your son is only leaving now to the front. Mine, he was sent on the first day of the war. He was already come back twice wounded and had been sent back to the front. What about me? I have two sons and three nephews at the front. You ever think what my dream talk? Maybe, but in our case, he is our only son. Our situation is different from yours, madam. What difference can it make? You may spoil your only son by giving excessive attention, but you cannot love him more than you would in all of your other children if you only. Parental love is not like a bread that can be broken into pieces and split amongst the children in equal shares. A father gives all of his love of each of his children without discrimination, whether it be one or ten. If I am suffering now of my two sons, I'm not suffering of each of one of them, but double. Well, true, but suppose a father has two sons at the front. If he loses one of them, he still has one left to console him. Of course, uh, hoping it doesn't happen to you. Yes, a son left to console him, but also a son left for whom he must survive. In the case of the father but only son, if the son dies, the father can die too and put an end to his stress. Now which of the conditions is worse? Don't you see how my case would be worse than yours? Nonsense! I say nonsense! Do we give life to our own children for our own benefits? Alright, our children do not belong to us. They belong to the country. Do you really think of the country when we give life to our children? Our sons are born because they must be. And when they come to life, they take our own life with them. Why then? Is it natural that they should consider their love for their country as even greater than their love for us? 
Yes, my son is at that age, but we as his parents have the right to consider his feelings. I'll be damned to say, to hell with this country if my son dies in this war. If our country is in natural necessities, like bread that we eat as to not die in hunger, somebody must go to defend it. <laughs> and you seem so stoic about losing your son like nothing happened. I know our situations may be different, but it's expected to be emotional when I'm losing my only son. You are wrong. Our sons go, for that is what they want. We may belong to our children, but they do not belong to us. They have their own dreams and aspirations. You know that, right? I understand that. But why would I want to send my son to a war where he'll never come back to us again? He'll die young being sad and regretful for not wanting more in life. But while we cry, knowing we'll never see him again. Wrong again. They don't want tears. Because if they die, they die happy. If you live long enough, you'd want more in life. Your son is doing this for you, and even he knows what will happen. So why do you insist that you are your own son? I... I never thought of it that way. I... I guess I was too wrapped around trying to find a way to not let him go. Too afraid to see him leave. And too blind to see that he wasn't the little boy I once knew. That's why everyone should stop crying. Instead, everyone should laugh, as I do. Because my son was dying satisfied at having ended his life in the best way he could have wished for. That's why, as you see, <laughs> I don't even wear mourning. Quite so, quite so, this old man has a right on his sentiments. Then, is your son really dead? Son, it's been so long since I visited you. I'm sorry. Things are just getting busier these days. It wasn't supposed to be like this. You were supposed to be alive and visited me. Not the other way around. Do you remember the time we went fishing by the river? Your laughter echoed through the valleys just like the ripples on the water. Life was simpler back then, my dear. I never thought I'd be standing here talking to a tombstone instead of you. I never imagined it see so much destruction. Indeed, war changes a person. It makes us appreciate the little things. You see those fields? I used to run through them when I was a child. But now, they are scarred by the ravages of the war. And it's not just the physical scars. It's the ones inside. The ones who never heal. You know, most people say that we are fighting for a cause. But I can't help but wonder. At what cost? We were right, my friend. A journey that's both a beginning and an end. It's hard, isn't it? Saying goodbye to those we hold dear, not knowing what the future holds. How do we find the strength to let go anyway? We may not fully comprehend the challenges they face, but then we bring support can be a source of strength to them. Together, we form a network of encouragement and hope. Uncertainty is the best compassion of every journey, my friend. We cope by focusing on the strength within us to endure. Our loved ones will carry our hope.
don't have to do this. You don't have to go to the front. We'll find a way to keep you safe. Dad, I have a duty. I can't stay here while others are risking everything. I'm so, so proud of you. Please just change your mind if you want to. Mom, you raised me to be courageous to face the challenges head on. I have to do this. I promise you, I'll do everything. Son, I'm proud of you as your father. And I'm proud to have you as my son. So please, keep your mother's promise and come back to us, please. Yes, Dad, I'll promise to do everything. I don't know. the truth we belong to them but they never belong to us and when they reach 20 they are exactly what we were at their age we too had a father and a mother but there were so many other things as well girls cigarettes illusions new ties and the country and of course whose call we would have answered when we were 20 even if father and mother had said no now at our age the love of our country is still great, of course, but stronger than it is, the love of our children. Is there any one of us here who would have gladly take his son's place at the front of Hikud? respects to all the families that gathered here today in the shadow of both triumph and tragedy I stand before you with a heavy heart and a profound sense of responsibility 
The war is finally over. A war that demanded from our compatriots not just blood and sweat, but unimaginable sacrifice that has forever altered the course of our nation's history. Some of our compatriots stand among us today, survivors of a conflict that tested the limits of human endurance. I salute your courage and perseverance, your sacrifices and unwavering dedication to the cause had brought us to this moment of ceasefire. And yet, we stand here not only as victors, but also as bearers of sorrow. To those who did not return, to the families who now feel the emptiness left by their absence, I offer my deepest condolences. I'm sorry for all your loss, and I recognize that no words can fully capture the grief that resides in your hearts. Each fallen hero was a beacon of bravery, a testament to the indomitable spirit that fuels the pursuit of freedom. As we bow our heads in mourning, let us also lift our hearts in remembrance. The effort and bravery of our fallen heroes will never be forgotten. Their stories etched in the annals of our shared history will serve as a guiding light for generations to come. In their sacrifice, we find the strength to build a future where the horrors of war are but distant echoes, where peace reigns supreme. So today, as we bid farewell to the relentless storms of war, let us also embrace the responsibility of rebuilding. The torch of freedom has been passed to us by those who can no longer carry it. And we must ensure that their sacrifice was not in vain. May the memory of our heroes inspire us to cultivate a world where peace is not just a ceasefire, but a lasting testament to the resilience of the human spirit. finally over. It seems so surreal. I could only think that this is all just a dream and I could only wish that this peace would last forever. I do too, but I have to thank you for giving me the courage to face this future. If it weren't for you, I'd still be a grieving woman, Julian. Peace is finally a gift from the Lord of all. Together, we navigate the uncharted of territories of peace the echoes of war we have been subsided, but the scars, both seen and unseen, serves as a testament of the goddess of peace. As we embark on this journey, let us not forget in the crucible of the adversity. Perhaps in rebuilding, we'll discover a new definition of peace, one that may be characterized by the absence of conflict, but with the presence of unity, understanding, and the enduring spirit of the Journey does not end with its peace alone. It starts anew. Together we shall nurture the seed of hope, cultivating a landscape where the blossom of peace can flourish. 
The wounds may heal, but the memories of our collective resilience shall endure, reminding us that even in the aftermath, we possess the power to shape our future. I'm sorry for your loss. Your son fought bravely and profoundly for his country. Our son was a hero in his own right. He did what he had to do and what was right to protect his country. Our son may not be with us in the way we wished, but he came home. I'm happy that we got to see him. War leaves scars that time cannot heal. I commend your strength in facing this tragedy. I once again thank you for your son, for his bravery, for his country. I'll be going now. But wait, before you go, General, could you tell us if our son had a smile on his face before he passed away? <laughs> How is he? He's in a bad condition, General. Okay. Check. General. Tell my parents. I love them both. Well, he did have a great smile on his face. I can see it, he gets it from his parents. Thank you, General. So I'll be going now. Thank you. 
have known your older brother, but he's a part of you. A hero and a guardian angel watching over us.